Hello, hello, everybody. It's 1.03 a.m. Central Time on the 24th of November 2023. It's Thanksgiving, end of Thanksgiving here in the United States, still going out west on the West Coast, and hope you're doing well. Had a long day myself. We're doing okay, relatively speaking. I've got to keep this short so we can get this update uploaded via my slow DSL connection. But we're not here to talk about my pains of life. We're going to talk about seismic. So really quick, let's just talk about the big earthquake activity and the largest eruption of the year for the whole planet that took place. It took place right in here, right at Papua New Guinea at Ulawan Volcano, originally reported at 60,060. FL600, 60,000 foot, and then it was downgraded to 50 and then 40 as it dissipated out. But still a very large blast in the middle in between are two large earthquakes that struck after the blast. So first blast in the middle, then over to the east, 7 point something earthquake downgraded to 6.7. And over to the west, 6.0, 6.1, 5.9, depending on who you go with that's on the plate boundary to the west and to the east by about 2,000 miles or so let's get a uh, earthquake open from usgs oops just open the russians and i don't know man at opening russian sites probably is going to get all kinds of attention but let's go over to the usgs after opening a russian site let's see that'll probably help things what don't you think Let's go over and take a quick look at the latest earthquakes reported from the USGS. We're just going to consult this for the red-lined map that I always show in my updates. This is the USGS plate boundary map and Ulawan Volcano in Papua New Guinea right there roughly in the middle between our big earthquake over to the east and our big earthquake over to the west. And like I said, we're look, look at the 1,000-kilometer range and 1,000-mile range. So we're like 2,000 miles to the east and 2,000 miles to the west. First big blast movement to the east, movement to the west. And then again, look at the red lines, east and west. Then you can see we go about the same distance to the north, up into Japan by Tokyo at the h shape plate boundary up here. And then we go about the same distance over to the west, even further over into Sumatra, Indonesia. Now, Sumatra, let's go back to the start of the week and show you what hit because we had warned for a large earthquake to strike next to Sumatra literally the next morning. This earthquake struck. It's a magnitude under what I was looking for. I was looking for this to go up to near 7.0. Came in at 6.5, downgraded to 6.3. But still, check it off the list west of Sumatra. Then you can clearly see something's going on right here in the middle. 6.7 to 7.0 earthquake. They actually have it at 7.2 in the Philippines agency. Again, they reported it themselves at 7.2. USGS 6.7. We'll check it out. Right? They did the same thing over to the east, USGS did. So it's two sevens, that's really what's going on. In the middle, we got a big blast, and then we have deep earthquake activity going up to the north along the Izu Ridge. This is right next to or just south of where we had the new island form. A new island popped out of the ocean out the side of Iwo Jima. So Iwo Jima, the famous island, of course, from World War II, but it's a volcano as well, and a new island formed on the side of there as it erupted. Then up to the north, another 5.9, but this one's shallow, 50 kilometers deep. This is on the south side of Hokkaido, northeast side of Japan's main island. So let's just recap. Seven, seven, big blast, deep earthquakes. Then area hit at the start of the week here, and that's all in the West Pacific. This is our 5.9 and greater activity. Let's take it down a step to fives, 5.5, I mean, and then f fully down to 5.0. This is the week now. So it's a fair amount, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got 4.9s 4. 4. on there. Let's get those out of there. There we go. But this is the week. Color coding tells us how old these are. Let's turn it down to the last two days. You'll still be able to see the spot of interest. So I've issued a warning for the people in Australia, right here at what I would call your seismic headwaters, where we have a split that comes off of the plate boundary. Here, you see, I'll mark the earthquake on the USGS map. And then here on our map, you see we have an arrow pointing down between both sets of cratons in the northwest part of Australia. And we see seismic come in from up here, seismic activity. 
flow, the wave comes in and goes all the way down here to Kangaroo Island, southeast down by M Melbourne. And then we see a significant sized earthquake strike down here, about the same size as what comes in up here, goes across and spreads out across the plate. So we could expect something like 4.5 to 4.9 to strike down in the east southeast side of Australia. Then compensation on the west southwest side by Perth and the western coast. And then possibly, I'll say possible, in the middle by Uluru here at the middle of the plate as well. So it looks like it's going to be a flurry of activity going across Australia in the 4 to 5.0 range, which is pretty significant for Australia. Keep an eye out for that. Also, for my viewers down in New Zealand, I don't normally have to issue much, but when you've got 4 point something activity and some 5s and 6s to the north, deep earthquake activity on the north side, south side, you have hardly anything just to 4.4. I'm going to look between the two on the plate boundary that's the north island right at the tip i'm sorry right here at the catcher's mitt it's been a while since we've had to warn you it could go up to 5.9 just like all the other 5.9s all the way up on the north side like i said i have to keep this quick so let's quickly wrap this up with central south america and the united states so here central and south america you can see there's a cluster of threes that's not that much but we're incorporating the mexican feed if you check the usgs feed it doesn't show anything for the day so Something's going on on the coast of Mexico. We're going to look right down in between both sets of events. You see how all the rings overlap right there in the middle, right along the coast, Mexico. I'd watch there for something 6 to 6.5, just like what's going on on the west side. We should see something similar in the east side. It's kind of telling us where to look. The two clusters where the rings overlap. Think of that like a middle point where two sets of waves overlap, standing wave forms. As we go down to the south, we have the same principle that applies, but it's a greater distance apart. Where the rings overlap is where we watch. So Peru is in the crosshairs for this week. And then we go across the Caribbean over here to the east. You can see the cluster at Mexico, cluster over at Puerto Rico. Halfway point between the two brings us into Cayman Island. Cayman Island should start moving from Cuba, Jamaica, Cayman Islands. Jamaica got hit a few weeks back, or actually a couple months ago now. Pretty significant. Near 6.0 level activity. Now, I'm not looking for that now. Should go about 5.4, just like over to the east or down to the south. 5.4 to the south from several days ago here. Let's see if I can get that on the screen here. And then now we have a 5 down to the south from yesterday. But anyway, 5.4 over to the east, 5.4 to the south. Makes sense. 5.4 in the middle in between our two sets of quakes. When I say middle, I mean halfway point between here and here. If we go along this red line, halfway point between Mexico and Puerto Rico if we go along this. So that brings us right in here, Cayman Islands, west of Jamaica. And the size magnitude, it's dependent on the size everywhere else. You can see we're dealing with the same sized earthquakes all the way across, where both sets of arrows are pointing. Big arrow pointing to the north, big arrow pointing to the south. Both are receiving the same sized energy. Okay, now let's get into the United States. We still have two more days to go in my watch for Southern California. We're watching the LA Basin for up to 5.0 level activity. Also, we were watching Texas and we're watching the East Coast up in Quebec for new activity to strike. So what's happened? Well, so far, nothing. Well, I mean, take a look at it. It's pretty significant. But when you really look at it, when we talk about large earthquake activity, we don't have any to talk about. We have a four over in Texas, which is fairly big, but it's at a drill point at the oil and gas drill points. There are significant areas moving, but we have not seen the Northeast move much at all in the past two days. Take a look at it. There's just some 1.0 level activity from a couple days ago when I issued that watch for 4.0 level activity we're watching on the East Coast up in Quebec at the Vermont, New Hampshire main border. So quickly, let's just wrap this up. Watching Southern California for two more days. That's down in L.A., and we're watching up in the northeast for two more days. We're watching LA for 5.0 or well, upper four or near five. And then we're watching up here in the 4.0 level activity on the east coast. Now there's something going on across the plate now. Last 48 hours, we're moving down at the Geronimo Volcanic Field down at the Arizona, New Mexico border. And I do actually have Google Earth open on the web app. And I got my place marks loaded. Check it out, guys. You guys know I'm like running into some serious bandwidth issues trying to even get this out to you. It's going to take forever to upload. But so all the way over here, we have the Geronimo Volcanic Field. Oh, wait, 
Of course, I don't have the borders and labels turned on. There we go. Okay, so right here where the place mark is. And for those of you who don't know about it, you can go look it up. Geronimo Volcanic Field, well known. There's volcanoes across the whole area. I'm waiting for my place marks to load, but they're probably not going to because I'm on a DSL connection. At least I can show you the spot. Okay, anyway, we're not going to complain. Like I said, we're going to go over on the West Coast, take a quick look. I can't look all these up, guys. That's just not going to work with my bandwidth now. I've got good news that I'm going to give to you at the end of this broadcast, so please stay tuned. I do have good news for you guys if you've been paying attention to what's been going on. So, anyway, summed up, we're going to watch down in California. Then, like I said, there's something going on across the plate. Whenever you see Geronimo moving down south down at the Arizona border and you see 4.0 level activity in Texas going back up to the northwest, we start seeing swarms, little outbreaks that are, these are all stacked on top of each other. Now, when we get 10 or more earthquakes at a spot, I consider that a swarm. So I would really call these clusters. But, I mean, we're just getting on the edge or threshold of swarm activity at the Markagunt Plateau volcanic field in southwest Utah, as well as nearing swarm level activity up at Yellowstone, as well as swarm level activity north of Yellowstone up by Bozeman. Going in diagonal line, we have a series or a line of earthquakes that goes back up to the northwest. It's so obvious you can see it's a diagonal line, equidistantly spaced earthquakes all about the same size. This is the sign of a wave coming into the magma chamber down below from the northwest following the edge of the craton like a waveguide, like a microwave guides a wave in your microwave to your food. This is the greater VLF seismic wave in the plate, and it's being guided along the edge of the craton right down into the magma chamber where it comes up to the surface at Yellowstone. Now back behind it, the center of the magma chamber at Yellowstone below Idaho, pretty quiet. We're looking for that to go back up as well. Last time I issued a forecast for this, it completely flopped. We did not see 4.0 level activity at all. Instead, we got a swarm at Yellowstone, then it moved on across the plate. So uh, that last time we issued a warning for central Idaho, it flopped just as a point of reference. It's now gone quiet as the edge of the craton is moving over to the east. It's pretty obvious which way the wave is going. It's going down across into Yellowstone, and it's also coming in from the south. Now let's get into the south. California-Nevada border swarming out at Long Valley Caldera at the supervolcano there. That's where this big stack of earthquakes is. I'll highlight it for you. Whoops. Highlight it for you here. There we go. So that's Long Valley Caldera. It's a well-known supervolcano. Markagunt Plateau due east. It's moving. Yellowstone's moving. We've got the Geronimo Volcanic Field moving. Then we go down here to the east by southeast, and we're at the nuclear test sites in South Nevada. And I'll highlight that for you as well. That's circle that with my mouse if you can even see it. And then so a diagonal line of earthquakes going down along the California Nevada border. These are all at volcanoes. We've already looked them up. So we got Black Butte up to the north. We get in the middle. We're next to Maidao. And then we go down to the east by southeast. Like I said, we're down at the actual known supervolcano at Long Valley. It gets a little hard to see. So I could zoom in a little bit because all the numbers are on the screen. But you should still be able to make out. We're at the California-Nevada border. Sorry, it's getting choppy, but I've got all these earthquakes on the screen here at the same time. And again, slow connection, slowing everything down, plus a different computer. Anyway, nuke sites over here. Then we have the Ubihibi craters. You guys know about these locations. If you don't, go check them out on Google Earth. Down to the south we go into Ridgecrest, past Volcano Peak, or Volcano Peaks. There's three of them in a row down at china lake and then we have a series of quarry blast over in a di somewhat well diagonal but equidistant spacing these are all quarry blasts i don't know what's going on there guys but they're all quarry blasts same day same size across the huge area see that so a line of quarry blasts okay that's what they're listed as i'm just here to tell you it's just odd to see a equidistant spaced line of 1.5s across all of Southern California in a time where we're looking for an earthquake right there where these point to. Seriously, out here along the coast, right there where the one point, let me highlight it. There. Right next to it, that's where I'm looking for a upper four to low five to strike in the next two days or less, or it's a flop for me. 
Meanwhile, there's a diagonal line of quakes coming down the creeping section of the San Andreas. You can see that there as well. Everybody's familiar with the San Andreas going from the Bay Area down to the south, the creeping section, and it stops right at Parkfield again, where our drill points pick up in the valley. If you're not familiar with that, I can actually maybe zoom in on that here on Google Earth. It shouldn't be too much to load, I don't think. We'll wait and see. I don't know. I've shown it enough times in previous videos that this blurry screen could be filled in by many viewers. Should be able to tell me what's right here. There we go. See where it says oil well? Okay. This is the famous zone called the Missouri Triangle, but it's not named after the state of Missouri. Uh, but zooming in and in, there we go. Wait for it to load. There's going to be pads that start to appear on the ground, these the desert cutout areas. And I just have this area memorized over a long period of time. I won't try to zoom in anymore. You guys can go do the research if you need to go look these up any further. You'll find the oil and gas wells, which are there. Like I said, limited connection. It is what it is. Okay, so good news is I'm here doing an update for you now, right? I'm going to upload this regardless of the time it takes to upload. And we'll get this out on YouTube. It'll probably be uploaded by tomorrow, considering the length of it now. I just want to let everybody know I am here. And now, finally, the real good news is that we're going to be moving the Dutch since operation. And I'm moving personally in my personal life. So I don't know. It gets a little hectic, but... The Duchess and I are going to be opening our own shop, our own store. And I don't know about it being open to the public as much as it would be by appointment only. I'm going to be doing a geopolymer. I'm going to be making my man-made stone and rock, large pieces, countertops, mantle pieces, all kinds of stuff like that. Man-made stone of my own mix. And then Duchess is going to be doing her own work as well with uh, resins, geopolymers, and her own art as well and i'll have my art as well and the dutch sense collectibles if you're familiar with those that i developed during lockdown 2020 21 and into 22. so we're going to have all that available in a store here in st louis missouri and um, i'm liking the idea of also maybe possibly doing speakers speaking engagements where people can come speak celebrities of sort if you will maybe not celebrities like hollywood but uh, people who would want to talk in a way about certain topics could do it from our storefront or cafe or speakeasy, however you want to call it, uh, the club. <laughs> Again, I think uh, I like the idea of membership only, maybe. But we will have a place to operate from as a place of business to operate out of. And I'll be doing Dutch Sense from there as well. I'll be building a booth there with, uh, you know, glass that you could maybe possibly see me through if you were to come by and walk, look through the window and see me in there maybe so i think we're going to probably do that in the next few months well i know we're going to be doing that in the next few months and whether or not it's open to the public is an entirely different story but we will be having our products that we make for sale in a store and uh, i'm going to go big with the geopolymer i'm not just going to be making small things however you guys will be able to get small things i'm going to be making Dutch since arrow globes. Well, <laughs> well, a globe is up for debate, right? Well, we can do a flat version too. Uh, if you, so we'll have those available, and we'll also have the ashtrays and other small items that people can buy. Geopolymer-wise, I'm going to be making all sorts of stuff: candlesticks, vases, vases, vases. Okay, you guys, much love. Now, I want you to have an earthquake plan. That's the whole point of doing all this. And I will be also maybe having earthquake available items. Uh, items referencing earthquakes or maybe things that I find that are related to geophysics. That might also be in my store as well as books and other things. Literature. So we're really excited about doing this. And it's come out of a, a series of frustrating situations, which I, this is the final part of this video. And I'm not going to mention any names in particular. Um, but I do want to give a big shout out to all the video makers, researchers, even celebrities who gave me a shout out during my shutdown here who took notice, who saw that what happened. And if you don't know what happened, I'm not going to go into it now. I'm getting a solution to what happened, and it's requiring me to get other people and business involved um, in order to deal with what's going on. And it's just a long story on all of that. But I ran into a brick wall when it comes to dealing with, well, I guess what people would call Big Brother. I guess you could call it that. Uh, a lot of people don't believe in Big Brother. I can tell you, We've ran into a brick wall with people of official authority. 
So anyway, I'm alive. I'm here. I just don't have internet. It literally has been cut to the point where doing my job from here is not possible. So we're taking the next step with the store. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I really like the idea of also live music where bands can come play. And then I can also stream it live to my members here on my YouTube channel. So if we're doing a live performances at the Dutch Synth store, we would also stream that live online to people who are members on my channel. So you don't miss out, especially if we have people come speak. You know, one of the guys who gave me a shout out is a very controversial, what they would call conspiracy theorist. He's well known internationally. He's the biggest one, so to speak, aside from me, of course. So that's not my take on myself. That's what everybody else called me. But maybe have him come speak and the others and anybody else who wants to speak on geophysics topics would be welcome. So I just really like this idea. And of course, doing the live stream and broadcast from there, I like the idea of recording videos from a Dutch Synths studio. So word up, much love. We're going to save this as a video. We'll get it out over on YouTube. One more time, let's sum this up. What are we looking for? We're looking for 5.0 level activity still for the next two days. Well, up, upper four, low five in Southern California, next to Ventura, North LA. We're looking for 4.0 level activity over on the East Coast, all the way up in the Northeast, up at Quebec. Over in the West Pacific, we got our large earthquake activity we were looking for in my last forecast. I have to get another forecast out in two days time. I will do that. I can just tell you right now, we're not done yet. We have a bunch of new deep earthquake activity. I have not checked the solar activity, but I'm presuming, and sometimes that could be bad, but presuming that there's been a buffet in the magnetosphere. We'll find out about the solar wind and charged particles in my update from the next two days from now. Look at our arrows going across Asia. I didn't even touch on Asia and Europe, but I can sum it up by saying, look, 4.4 to 4.6 here, 4.6 to 4.9 here, both arrows, well, relatively next to both arrows and then they're pointing in like a funnel to our bigger earthquake activity 5.2 4.9 4.7 then we spread out on both sides of iran and focus back in on turkey with another 5.2 so 5.2 to 5.3 here 5.2 to 5.3 here then we go out across europe and we spread in two directions one around the outside edge of europe up through poland and the other up into Italy. We had issued a warning for North Italy to be on watch for up to 5.0 level activity next to Turin. It was struck by 4.1, so I'm 0 0.9 off. Spot on in location, in case you don't know where Turin and Milan are. So we warned between Turin and Milan. Turin is here in western northwest Italy, right where the green meets the light tan. And Milan is over to the east, right here at the center part of Italy and north, right where the mountains are. So right next to Turin, we got a 4.1. Again, we're looking for up to 5.0. 4.1, definitely that's the quake we're looking for. Finally, let's wrap it up with Iceland. What happened to Iceland? Right? I'm not saying it's not gonna erupt. Hey, that's a double negative. That's a proper use of a double negative, kids. In Missouri, we would say, I ain't saying that it ain't. But, so the volcano has not erupted yet. They had what a, a magma plume or a, a, a intrusion that took place, a lacolith, if you could even call it that, uh, a pocket of magma formed below that town in South Iceland, Southwest Iceland. That prompted the warnings for a big eruption to take place. They didn't know whether it would be a blast or whether it would be some kind of effusive lava flows where just lava comes out. It's really impressive looking, but that's it. Well, so far, there hasn't been anything huge, as far as I know, up till now, but seismic shifted as expected. If you watched my update five, six days ago, you knew to watch for this. We're watching for the same sized earthquakes that were striking in Iceland to strike up to the north of the North Pole. So is this North Pole? No, North Pole's right here, where it all comes together at a very fine pinnacle point west of the X. This is the physical North Pole. And so we're at Svalbard at the Arctic Circle, and we got the same size quakes. So that's what we were looking for. We were looking for 5.0 level activity to go up on the north side of Iceland, and it did. So now what's going on? Spread across the whole 
North Mid-Atlantic Ridge. I would expect the same sized earthquakes to strike down south now, right here, or somewhere very close to it. South of the Reek, Reek Yanes Ridge, probably butchering the way that's pronounced. Have I left anybody out? Oh, Africa. Well, we can just, where the X is. Where the X is, that's south, southeastern Africa. We watch from there all the way down to South Africa itself. But some weird stuff's been going on down there. A lot of weird weather going on down in Southern Africa. The big hail just hit. It was baseball to softball size. People never seen anything like it down there. And it's pretty intense to see. I'm not saying the hail is related to earthquakes or anything. I'm just a lot of weird weather going on down there while the seismic went somewhat quiet. So I think X, where the X marks the spot, that's where we're going to see new 5.2 to 5.5, which, I mean, for Africa, it's a big deal because of the construction. So we, if you know anybody down there, I guess you would need to let them know next to the Democratic Republic of Congo and T Tanzania. Is that, oh, wait. I don't know my, I don't know my countries. Don't know my countries. Dutch forgot his countries in his time that he's been off. I had to learn all, all the countries in the world, and then it's just like in one ear out the other. Where is Tanzania? Oh, hey, no, no. I'm one country off. Zambia. Zambia and Zimbabwe. The X is right there. Okay, close. Close. The people of... Tanzania are going to be extremely upset with me. Or maybe, no, I'm sorry, the people of Z Zambia will be extremely upset. I apologize for offending you. Regardless of whether you're offended, kind of doesn't matter. If you don't have an earthquake plan, you don't survive an earthquake that you could have survived. What if you get injured? You're not even worried about survival, you're just worried about getting injured. Cut. Broken limb. You could be prepared by doing a few things. I would recommend to have a change of clothes and a set of shoes by the side of your bed. At least a, a set of shoes. Because if an earthquake hits in the middle of the night and you're asleep and things are broken across the floor and you don't have hard bottom shoes or slippers, it's going to be a bad situation. Power might be out and you might be trying to go across the floor with broken things on it. Not good. So keep the shoes by the side of the bed. And then change of clothes, set of shoes, also in your emergency kit. Make sure your emergency kit is seasonal specific. A lot of people don't update it throughout the year. Well, a lot of people live in an area where you might just have relatively mild climate throughout the year. But for the rest of us out there, you have to have seasonal specific. For the summer, of course, it's going to be summer stuff. And for the winter, you're going to need a lot of stuff to keep warm. Secondarily, you probably need uh, IDs and the uh, information and... Uh, documents and all those things that you would want to have, you would either have copies of those or you could even possibly now to have digital pictures of them, at least so you can have the information and uh, have it on a waterproof flash drive or something in a you know, lightweight, easy to carry. And it's got all your personal information. It's on the flash drive. And uh, that's at least better than nothing, right? Just little ideas that you guys will, of course, come up with better ideas than what I'm throwing out there now. The food and the water situations if you haven't learned in the past several years during lockdown and everything else to have an extra supply of food and water, or at least food, uh, then I don't know what to tell you. So you need to have an extra supply of food and water to get you through a few days or hopefully a few weeks or months if it's long term. And I don't sell any of that stuff. Now, maybe if I have a store down the road, I might, but that'll be a physical store where you can maybe jump on and I might ship it to you or something. Not going to be selling that stuff in videos. That takes too much time. And I find that a lot of people don't listen when they see it in videos over and over again. However, if you hear me in a video at the start of a video in the future, and I'm pushing my own geopolymer man-made stone products like mantelpieces, tabletops, and other pieces of art and deco, I hope you don't mind. And if you do mind, eh, tough guys. <laughs> 1.34 a.m. Central Time. Perfect time for me to get on out of here. I don't know how long this is going to take to upload, but we'll find out. Peace.